We're going to call the Ashton County address. Forestry Department meeting to order. And roll call. John Wiener. Here. Marty Dietek. Here. Absent are Gary Murtig and Rich Hilber. And I am myself. I'm here. Kathy Schumi. You do not have to wear a mask to this meeting. So if you are wearing a mask, you may take them off as long as you stay at your seat and you stay distanced apart. I need a motion to approve the minutes for the April meeting. So moved. Motion by Marty, seconded by John. Thank you, John. Request for public comments or invited guests. We have none. Snowmobile ATV trail business, Bill Chandler and or Chris Hoffman. Well, Bill Chandler would have been calling in on the Zoom that's not functional, so I don't think there's anything to report at this time. Everything is closed and signs are picked up, the gates are locked and everything, so it's a little bit of season we've all put to bed at this point. What, what do you have like for the future summer on projects? It'll just be the normal, as far as I know, the normal ongoing, you know, brushing and mowing and whatever was damaged over the winter that needs to be repaired and anything else that comes forward. Okay, any other questions? All right, okay. like that. DNR fish biologist. DNR wildlife biologist, Jenna. Um, yeah, I don't have much to report on. Um, right now we're gonna be working on openings and trails work on the Ashton County Forest. Um, woodcock and grouse surveys were completed and are look, looking pretty promising so far this year. As long as our summer remains pretty mild, we we'll, should have good birds in the fall. Um, one big advancement is that the Ashton County uh, Wildlife Biologist position was filled. So that was um, Todd Nass in the past. Eddie Shea is going to be the new biologist. That's E D D I E Shea, S H E A. Um, and I believe he starts next week, Monday. Um, let's go to number six, the recreation officer uh, report by Bruce Jonas. Huh? All right. And the DNR Foresters report, Avery Jenkins. That's Avery uh, Jenkins. Um, so it's, we're coming up on the end of our DNR fiscal year. And so that's kind of like the way um, we measure our, you know, our work year to year. So um, the, as of June 1st, we have 10 hours left to, um, you know, as part of our annual commitment to the county force. So we, had, we started with like 900 something and now we're down to those last 10. So we're in really good shape. Uh, we would not want to be in a position where we still you know, had 100 hours to work in these couple of weeks. So um, looking back at the last year, you know, what did we do? Um, we established um, three, I think maybe four sales. Uh, some of that was going on before I came to Mellon last fall. Um, we helped out with the planting this spring, uh, about almost 4,000 trees in the ground, and also <clears throat> some DNR equipment was used to prepare the site for planting. Um, so those are kind of like the notable uh, contributions to the county forest on behalf of DNR, in addition to the normal things that we do, like maintaining forest inventory. Um, fire season is pretty much, well, at least the spring fire season is pretty much over with. Um, here in Ashton County, we had one um, notable fire. It was almost 40 acres in the town of uh, Marengo. And besides that, you know, a few burning complaints here and there, but Kind of quiet in Ashton County, but statewide, um, we have burned, uh, let's see, 1,800 acres this year. Last year at this time, we had only burned 517 acres. Um, so we've already, um, you know, well surpassed what we burned last year. And um, if the summer stays dry, we might see some more uh, fire activity. What is the, the reason for the uh, more this year than last year? Um, well, we lost the snow pretty early. Uh, there were quite a few fires in March, and generally we're snow covered in March. So when that when that snow burns off, um, everything is just brown. We had a lot of dry, hot weather around like Easter weekend and things. 
So like um, people get out, they're doing yard work, they burn debris, it's the fire to get started. You make control burn yourself, don't you? You have control burns, all of them? Um, so are you, are you asking about like prescribed fires and things like that? Or? Uh, yeah, DNR did quite a bit of uh, control burning, prescribed fire this spring. Uh, not so much here in Ashton County, but on like some of the larger wildlife properties in the area. I see you did it in Pine Lake and um, in the uh, DMA. Uh, okay. The, uh, that would have been the Forest Service. Yeah, that would have been the yeah. yeah, they're pretty, um, they do a lot of burning on the, on the National Forest. For different you know, just protect everything, basically? Promotion of roads. Right, yeah, they keep keep the um, the environment open, you know, free of trees. They kind of get it into like more of a grassy herbaceous type of cover. For wildlife, sometimes they they do burns to um, keep you know fuel from building up in the area. If the wildfire were to start, we have less to burn. Then. And the ten acres that burned in the Tom and Lingo, uh private property or uh, yeah, private property. Um, without getting too far into the details, they were um, trying to use fire to do some work on their property and got away from it. it happens a lot. Just when, the, when something like that happens, do you guys get reimbursed? Who pays for all that? Kind of um, well, it's kind of complicated, but generally the responsible party, the person who set the fire, is pays for the cost of suppression. So the firefighter's time and expenses associated with putting it out. Machinery. Yep. Yep. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, we were, uh, you mentioned something about you planted some trees. Yep, that was a uh, how many trees you planted? Um, it was almost four thousand trees. Yeah. And where was this planted? Um, what's the name of that? East Side Hunter Walking Trail. We had uh, that was the planning was the, it was on the county forest. On the county forest. The county forest? Yep. Yeah. We had a hunter walking trail, the East Side Hunter Walking Trail that um, we did a. Northern Harwood kind of like overstore Shelterwood um, harvest on it and the regen just didn't come back like we wanted it to so we underplanted it with a bunch of oaks. Um, Are you trying to do that every year? Or? No, this is just a one time project. We actually got funded through Rough Grouse. Rough Grouse, uh, we filed for a grant and got the money to do this project through them. Well, there's not a whole lot of sites that really do need it. This site was kind of unique. It just was really thick with hazel brush. It kind of suppressed some of the maples that, that were coming up in the area. There was some sedge, so it was kind of a unique site. We don't have a ton of sites that could be needed planting. What type, what type of trees? We planted oak trees in that that site just to increase the wildlife, you know, attributes with the, you know, the mass acorns, hopefully in the future and stuff like that, especially with it being a rough grouse, you know, habitat area. Any other questions? We'll move on. Uh, number 10 of the Foresters Report by Chris Hoffman. All right. Um, first thing I have is a recreation grant that we do every year. We're a little bit behind because of meeting dates and stuff, but it's not a big deal. Um, we had three applicants this year. As you recall, this is an annual grant that the committee may or may, cho may choose to or not to award. Um, sorry, I couldn't fit it on one page, but um, the first one was the Bay City Cultural Center. Um, I believe they call it the Bohemian Hall up in Ashland. Um, they've applied in the past. Um, they want to do an ADA compliant entry to their building, put in a, a wheelchair accessible ramp. <clears throat> you see there the project cost is estimated at $27,250. They've so far, as at the time of their application, they had raised $7,250, which gave them 26.61% cash in hand with an unfunded balance of $20,000. And they're asking for um, $5,000, which that was their potential grant amount, and that's what they're requesting. If you see on the far right of the comments, um, the project's appropriate. They meet all the minimum requirements. It's a good project as far as the language of the grant goes, and they've requested $5,000. <clears> the second one is the Good and Area Development Corporation. 
They want to build 88 compliant bathrooms and changing rooms at Gordon Lake. Um, they've got an estimated project cost of $104,830. So far, they have raised $26,803, which gives them 25.57% cash in hand for the project. So that leaves a unfunded balance of 70, just over $78,000, which gives them a potential grant amount of $19,500. Now, there's not that much money in the account, so you obviously can't award that. Um, they requested $6,500. There's $10,000 in this fund on an annual basis. So if we want to fund both those projects, we'll have to make a split somewhere. Um, the third application was the Tri-County Corridor Commission. They've got a culvert replacement that they need to do on the Tri-County Corridor. Um, they rushed a late application and it was incomplete. Um, and they were just, they're looking for help because obviously they don't have any money. It was all stolen from them. So I told them to submit what they had and that's what they did. And there's not enough information on the application, I think, for the committee to make a fair decision on that one. So I'm recommending that we fund the first two projects um, and I'll leave the dollar amount to the discretion of the committee. You have, you have 10,000 in the We have 10,000 that's budgeted. Um, and I will say that the Good Mary Development Corporation, if they were applying for a $50,000 grant through the DNR, so that will, you know, make up a substantial portion of, of what they're short if that gets funded, which I'm sure of. How, how is the first one going to fund their own funding? Fundraising, she said. That's where the, the original or the 7250 that they've got cash in hand has been fundraised as well. That's at the Bohemian Hall. So she's, she said they're going to do ongoing fundraising as well to get to the dollar amount that they need to complete their project. Well, I would, I would make a motion that we fund each one at $5,000. <coughs> I'll second that motion. So we have a motion by Marty to. Um, Give each of the applicants the Bay Area Cultural Center five thousand. Glidden Area Development Corporation will also get five thousand, and that will eliminate the full balance of the grant process. Marty made the motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I think they're both good projects. I think they are too. The money does do good for the bank. No. And that's exactly what the grant was for. Was to. Recreation. Mm -hmm. Where does that money come out again? It's it's a line item in the budget for the recreation grant. Yeah. Next, we're going to do the timber sales, approval of the timber sales. This is my favorite part of the whole course. My favorite part. I take this home and show it to my husband. Oh my God, they make lots of money. <laughs> yes. So we advertised five timber sales. <clears throat> um, we received bids on three of those timber sales. Um, you can see the summary of who bid on which sales and the dollar amounts that they bid. Um, I would, Jerome went through the bids yesterday when he assembled this, so everything is the bid bond and everything is correct and dollar amounts are correct. So I would just seek approval um, to award these three timber sales to Bell Timber, Ashland Matt, and Iron Bay Logging. I need a motion. Well, I'll approve the three sales and then the other sales that we just still will be worked on yet, then? Yeah, they'll be redid in the fall. Well, we did the yep. uh, So once they're bid, they just don't bid again for a while. Well, we only bid, we only offer bids twice a year in the spring and in the fall. Spring and fall. So then we re advertise them in the fall. Second? Oh, yeah. Okay. And hopefully the two more bids will have a second residency. So John made the motion to accept the three bids that were presented, and Marty will second it. All those in favor? All right. All right. Aye. Chris, do you see anything in here that, that indicates a trend in any particular direction? Um, no, obviously our, the prices that we're receiving have come way down from where they were a couple of years ago. Um, and I, that's a direct reflection of the Versal Mill being closed. 
Um, so I'm actually, based on where the markets are at right now, I'm pretty happy with the bid results that we've got. Um, obviously, we'd always like to make more money for our wood, but I'm just glad that we got three sales sold and on the books that we'll be worked on. Um, is that actually a map of uh, uh, kind of a new? They've been around this part of the state now for, this has got to be the fourth or fifth year that they've been here buying been, wood. You know. They are based out of Georgia. They've been producing lumber in Georgia for <laughs> ever. It's probably an 80 or 90 year old firm in Georgia um, that bought and opened the mill by Ashland. Uh -huh. um, to take advantage of this this new mat technology, I guess it's technology, new mat technology that utility companies are using for their low ground pressure situations. Yeah. You know, so they bought and started up that mill again. It's like been four or five years. But the company that actually owns Mount of Georgia has been around for like eight or nine years. They're a big producer in Georgia. Do you have an idea of how many sales that you have? From the spring, so long. Um, <clears throat> there's a one, two, probably six or seven sales total that are being worked on right now. Um, in some form or fashion, the the loggers have found some hardwood volume um, at other mills that aren't versatile, so they are able to move some wood. Still, um, there's been some harvesting going on in the morning forest. Um, there is a meeting today in Madison. Um, I don't remember the committee that's putting the meeting together, but they're taking comment on the governor's proposal to set aside some of that federal COVID money in the form of a loan to the timber producers co op to help them purchase the Versal Mill and also. A loan to help them purchase the part false paper, um, smaller dollar amount, but still what that co op would need to help yeah. fund their operations should they find the capital to purchase it. So that means happening at some time today. They're taking email comments, they're taking um, in person comments. So hopefully, and that's the park rolls mill and the Wisconsin Rapids mill. Both of them. Oh, the governor has proposed setting aside $15 million of COVID dollars in the potential loan to the timber producers co-op specifically for the Park Falls Mill. And he's proposed setting aside $50 million of that same COVID fund specifically for the timber producers cooperative to purchase the Versal. And so the co-op's gonna have to go out and find investors to front the money to buy the mill. Then they need money in the bank to operate to buy pulp, to pay employees, to pay the electric bill, to pay the gas bill, to pay the water bill. And that's what this loan fund that the governor is proposing would go for. And that's oh, that's been the big limiting factor for the Park Falls Mill. I mean, you could buy the Park Falls Mill for pennies on a dollar a day if you wanted to. But if you don't have the money to put into fixing the roof and buying bearings and paying off the gas bill to yeah. excel and that kind of thing, you're not getting anywhere anyhow. So the governor is trying to give them some capital for startup in the form of a loan that they would pay back at some point over time. I would guess the working capital requirements are pretty huge. I would think. Yeah. And I know just in part falls alone that every roof is leaking and the basement's falling out. Oh. Um, you know, they have their own sewage treatment plant in that mill, so they need money to buy chemicals or on that, to buy the budget to put into that, they need money to buy brown wood, they need money to you know, turn the light switch on. So that's what that money would be set aside for that they can take out in the form of a loan to, to get operating. Is it worth starting that back up again? Well, I think it is. Um, DuPont Chemical is willing to put money into um, whoever purchases it, get it up and running because it's the only mill left, left in the country, left in the world essentially, that produces that liquor that DuPont wants. So there are an Atlas paper, who I don't know who they are, I think they're out of Ohio. They're very interested in the product that comes out of that mill too, so they're willing to invest money in it as well. So I think if they had some operating capital to 
purchase the parts and pieces and pay some employees to get it back up and running. The market is there, it sounds like, for what they can produce. But the hard part is coming up all day with the operating capital. The purchase price, they can find some investment banker that's willing to write that check. You know, they'll, they'll buy $30 million worth of the scrap for a couple million dollars. It, they have the worst case scenario. Right. If they can get it up and running and make it a running entity, then there's that much further ahead. You're not going to buy a paper book for $2 million. What would happen to the last one that fell through? No operating capital. COVID happened. Uh, the Chinese businessman that purchased the mill, mm -hmm. who's apparently a multi billionaire, lives in Hong Kong. And when COVID started, the communist Chinese government restricted the amount of money that he could send out of the country on a daily basis to $10,000. Oh. Well, they spent $10,000 down there in a phone call. So they had no operating care. I think it's a good thing to try to save that part falls in the other paper mill because that's huge up here. The, the Wisconsin Rapids mill is way more important yeah. than the Park Falls mill to the right. region, but the Park Falls mill adds just another layer of competition to right. all crazy. Without the mill and the Park Falls. Well, without the mill and Park Falls, I know a lot of those are going to go plus 70%. Mm -hmm. I know, it's the time I went to a meeting at the town center and then basically talking about if it didn't go through that they really wanted to, the city wanted to buy it and tear it all down. So I don't know where that is. No, the city doesn't want to buy it. Mm -hmm. They can't afford it. Well, we, we could afford to buy it, but we don't want to deal with you know, all the environmental issues that probably exist in the oh, since sure. the 30s. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. This is that river next door. We, we, uh, you know, it would, the city's preferred choice would <coughs> be somebody to run it as a paper mill. Obviously, um, when the mill is running full speed, we pump two and a half million gallons of water a day. I think now that the mill's down, we pump 85,000 gallons of water a day. Yeah, there's environmental problems, and those are just the ones you know about. I wouldn't want to speculate as to what we don't know about. Because they've been running trains down there ever since, and equipment, and Lord knows what's been dropped on the floor inside. No, it's been there a long time. Any other questions? Nice job, um, Chris, explaining this to us. Uh, we're going to go to C on the agenda, and I'm going to read this into the record. Um, I would like to make a motion to pursuant to the Wisconsin State Statutes 19.851E deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties and the investment of public funds or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session regarding carbon credit offset contracts. So I'm making a motion that we adopt this and I need a second. So a motion by Kathy and seconded by John to pass this and then we are going to go into a closed session I stop recording? yes so we'll before you shut it off and it should be a roll call okay so we need a roll call vote to go into closed session okay so after after that i can pause yeah so roll call john wiener yep. marty vita yep. kathy shooty myself yes right. so we are going into closed session all right so we've got that we're in open session and is there any other business to come before the committee? The only thing I would like to do is since the Zoom is not working today, we had a committee member who asked to, that he could, I told him to call in on Zoom and we were not able to do that for him. And so um, if it's possible, I'd like to pay him for the meeting because he wanted to be here on Zoom, but we didn't have it ready. So if that's possible, any Mark, committee members who were not here and wanted to be on Zoom, I think we should pay him. Mark him present, yep. I can't mark him present because he's not here, but he did call me last night. And I said, call in on Zoom and he said, I'll do that. And now we, he couldn't get on. So I'm sure he's gonna be, that's probably the phone that was ringing over there. Yes. So. That's just a, a suggestion. 
So I need an approval to sign the expense vouchers. So moved. Moved by Marty. Second by John. Second by John. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. The next meeting date would be um, July 7th at 8 o'clock. Does that work for everybody? <coughs> Does anybody got a calendar handy? Is that the... No, that's okay. I can think of my other meeting. So July 7th at 8 o'clock. I need a motion to adjourn. Yeah, sure. I'll second it. John made a motion to um, adjourn the meeting and Marty seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.